Your muscles that suspend disbelief needed to be in good working order when watching The Other Side, the new murder mystery by David Hawley, recently at First Run Theater. That's not unusual for this kind of play, in which much of the pleasure comes from the ingenious twists and turns invented by the playwright, the collected works of Agatha Christie being exhibit A in the case. Hawley has set his play in Boston in 1929. The city hosts several prominent academic institutions, Harvard being the preeminent one. It also, according to Hawley, and probably in actual fact, was the home of a mafia-like organization taking advantage of Americans' continuing thirst for alcoholic beverages despite the rigors of prohibition. From that solid factual base, Hawley allows his fancy to embroider a series of amusing, if credulity-straining, coincidences. First, we have two graduate students from the British Isles sharing rooms while they study psychology at Harvard. Tall Phil Leveling, a good actor, played Sam Ramsbottom from Liverpool. Shorter Michael Pierce played Kevin Kelly from Dublin. Pierce is also a good actor, though the strain of maintaining his fierce Irish brogue sometimes messed with his rhythms, though he did okay with the comic bit of shrinking defensively into himself when his impulsive gift of gab opened his mouth when he shouldn't have. The two are studying the psychology of people's gullibility. To do this, they are investigating the spiritualism popular at the time and people's belief in mediums who can contact the spirits of the departed. So they set themselves up as a medium from India, that's uh, Stan Ramsbottom as Stanislas Ramsabato with full-blown Indian accent, and Kevin in exotic Shriner's cap as the person who deals with the victim or a customer, <laughs> because they do charge for these sessions. Why not make a little money from their research? They're poor foreign grad students, after all. One mark, or client, is Jenny Morpeth, a young widow played by Annalise Webb. She's eager to contact her recently deceased husband, not so much because she misses him, but because she'd like his approval of her plans for her future. Ram Sabato goes into his trance, reaches his contact on the other side, and relays messages from her late husband, aided by frantic miming of answers from Kevin, who's checking the woman's belongings for clues. She is so impressed by the medium that she tells her friend Benedetti about how wonderful he is. Benedetti is concerned because her father is missing and she fears he may be dead. With good reason, because her father is Baldessare, the local crime lord, an occupation with inherent dangers. Bridget Bassa expressed Benedetti's concerns well and her gratitude when Ramsabato does find her father on the other side. This brings Menedetti's brother Valentino to a consultation with the medium. He wants to know where the body is and who killed his father. David Rose had all the standard cliches of the Italian mobster down pat. So did big Alex L. Hilton as his accompanying muscle, who just happens to have a PhD in mathematics from Harvard. His skill with numbers, as well as his bulk, is useful to the Baldessari enterprises, and rum running pays better than academe. In the meantime, the Boston police have gotten wit of our grad students' activities, and Inspector Ronald Corner comes to investigate possible fraud. As the inspector, Rob Stevenson leaned very heavily on our boys. This whole crowd is there when Valentino insists on another attempt to contact his father. Using a Ouija board rather than the usual contact on the other side, Stan and Kevin are astounded when the board does actually reveal the location of the body. Was their charade real after all? And this is not the last of the twists in playwright Hawley's tale. I won't make a long story even longer than it was or seemed in the theater, <laughs> except to say that Thad O'Connell had comic fun as the grad student's Italian landlord, quaking in the presence of the notorious Baldessares. Phil Gill kept it all moving pretty well as director. The guy's digs looked pretty good in the set by Brad Slavik and Crystal Stevenson, except for all the cracks in the walls. Stevenson provided the period costumes, Gwyneth Rausch the props, and Nathan Schrader and Daniel Ludwig the lights. Jerry Rabushka composed period period jazz for scene changes. The other side provided clever entertainment, but I do wish First Fun would look for some scripts that are more than an inch deep. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that my disbelief remained unsuspended. Oh my, too bad. <laughs> we'll be watching some of these productions from our two seats on the aisle. And we'll be watching the mail and the email for your thoughts on theater and this program and for items for the calendar. Send them to two on the aisle HEC TV, 3221 McKelvey Road, Bridgeton, Missouri, 
6-3044 or by email to tota at hectv.org. Join Deborah Sharn for more news about theater on the KDHX podcast, Break a Leg, Theater in St. Louis and Beyond. And find more news about all the arts on State of the Arts on HECTV on Sundays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. Catch Bob's reviews on KDHX. Catch both of us next time on Cable and the Web for adventures with the Irish and other dramatic folks. We'll see you then. 